concurrency and locking. So locking schemes that are provided by JPA uh, includes optimistic locking from uh, JPA 1.0 and from JPA 2.0 uh, it includes pessimistic locking. In most cases you want to use optimistic locking because it will provide much better performance in most cases. So let's talk about the talk about the optimistic locking. So let's see how it works. It basically lets a concurrent transactions process simultaneously but detects and prevent collisions. So it is based on the assumption that most of the database operations are many many Vs but small number of smaller number of uh, change on the server. Okay? Uh, it's suitable applications where most concurrent transactions do not conflict, meaning mostly read and occasional write. So it provides a better performance since no log is held uh, the, uh, when things are being read. Okay? Now, allows anyone to read and update an entity. However, a version check is made upon commit. An exception is thrown if the version is updated in the database since the entity was read. So obviously, we need to detect you know, some kind of race condition. Uh, so this is how optimistic locking is actually using a version field, uh, version column uh, to detect that. Okay. So in order to implement optimistic locking, you have to have a field. You have to have a field in your entity class with a version annotation, meaning this column uh, will be used uh, the, uh, for version control. Okay, and uh, version attribute can be int, short, long, or timestamp. Okay. okay, so how does it work? So basically, let's say we have a process one and process two. So process one start the transaction and process two start the transaction. Both of them start the transaction. So process one find employee X. And uh, at that point, the version field of that field, version field, uh, the version field of that row is let's say two. Okay, uh, so it will remember that, uh, and then it actually uh, the same thing with this guy. So you know it actually reads the row, and uh, the version field is two. Okay, now the process one actually make a change on employee uh, object, and then it commit. So at this point, every time things get changed, the version field will be changed to three. Okay. In the meantime, process two it thinks that it you know the uh, it owns the uh, it owns the role, okay. So process one reads the salary and committed it, okay. Now it actually changed uh, the state of the employee to something else. Now when it tried to commit, exception will occur because when it tried to commit, the system will check uh, ah you know the the version is supposed to be two but it is changed to three so that means somebody else actually make a change so you know this commit is not gonna actually uh, you know the uh, finish instead this will this will throw an exception okay so commit transaction optimistic lock in fact it will cause optimistic lock exception because the version field does not match so when it tried to commit it always compare the current value of the field, version field, with the value you think it should be. Okay? Alright, so we're going to actually simulate that optimistic locking in exercise 4. So let's take a look at exercise 4. Okay? Uh, so first we're going to actually see version annotation. So if you actually see optimistic locking, observe version number maven project. So let's actually, you know, the uh, try uh, the optimistic uh, version number. So this is the standalone Java application, and uh, just run it, and uh, and run it here. And basically, you know, every time you make a change, it will change. So in this case, the version number is one still, uh, and this is uh, changed to three. Okay, because if you take a look at the code, so you know, let's run it. And you can see this version number is set to three. So you can see employee class has a version field and annotated with the version. Okay. And if you take a look at the uh, you know client uh, employee client code, okay. So we create we created employee one and employee two and employee three. Okay. And then we perform you know some query operation. And uh, then uh, you know basically we are starting a transaction. We change the salary of the uh, the uh, the uh, of the the 
uh, version record echo number one. So it will be incremented by one. Okay, and then version number of record two is incremented by one. So we actually, you know, the uh, performed it again. Okay, so the uh, that's why it's actually changing to, uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, yeah, so we, we actually remove the employee two. And uh, so this is the, uh, we have actually, uh, yeah, so basically we are working with uh, the uh, get raised employee of the first uh, first uh, record, and this is another first record. So it's actually incremented by uh, one and one. So it should be now three. Uh, that's actually why we get the uh, three in this case. Sanctions is actually, you know, changed. Uh, twice so it's it's starting from one then it changed to two then it changed to three so if you actually do one more time so let's actually you know execute this code uh, if you actually go to here and the client code here let's add another one so you know it will will just have another one like this okay and then run it job application and employee client class so you can see the value is changed for by the way we actually recreate the table uh, when you run the application because you use, we are using drop and recreate strategies so you know you can see it's changed for okay so it's basically very fine. The version uh, field is used to uh, keep the uh, you know the change, a number of changes they make. Okay. So now we're gonna actually try the optimistic locking. So we have uh, you know the uh, we're gonna actually try two users. So we have uh, multi-user test user Maven project. Okay. So we in fact we have uh, two users. So we have a uh, user one, user two. Okay. So we are going to run. The first one, okay, uh, it's going it's going to actually the uh, you know ask me to enter the amount of uh, salary I want to raise. So this is actually still uh, in transaction. So let's run this guy. So let's run run as job application and uh, employee client and uh, run it application. Okay, so you know the uh, so it will actually pop up this guy. Now we are going to run the second user, run as in Java application and then employ client. And here, okay, so we are going to have second user. Yeah, in this case, second user will actually change the value. Okay, so salary of the employee one is now updated by the second user. Okay, so now we go to the the uh, the uh, we go to the uh, uh, first user. Uh, so the first user is what is that first user UI? Uh, the first user UI is you know the, okay. So here we go. Now we go to the first user and we have to change the uh, you know the um, the salary. Now it will actually have uh, optimistic locking uh, the exception because it knows uh, it, it detects that somebody else already changed it. So click OK. Then we should actually see this optimistic locking. Uh, uh, you see here is uh, there is um, uh, optimistic locking somewhere. Yeah. So you should be in fact you know the exception. Uh, so let me just search. Opti Mistake. Fine. Oh, yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe the the wording is different. So let me actually see the uh, Java documentation of this guy. Yeah. Should. Oh. So this is the uh, rollback exception. Yeah. So it should have an optimistic lock exception. So let me actually try to find that one here. Optimistic lock. Find. Oh, here we go. Okay. So you can see optimistic locking exception. Okay. Right, so that uh, is what happens. So if you take a look at the code, you know basically uh, the uh, uh, this is the, uh, the user one. So we perform the transact, we start the transaction, then we are asking the user to enter the value. Okay, so you know we are inside a transaction. Okay, so this is being hold, 
And then in the uh, client two, client two, we actually change the value of that employee. And then we actually go back to employee one to perform this transaction. And that's where we got the optimistic locking exception problem. Okay. All right. So right now is the uh, 12 minutes to seven o'clock. I'm going to let you guys do this exercise in t the next 12 minutes. And then we are going to actually call it a day. Okay.